Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now when Vallejo actually came onto the market with their answer for the one coat paint stuff, so contrast, army painters, speed paints, and now express, there was a lot of excitement and most of the conversation I heard was people waiting for military themed colors. And then they released a bunch of very nice but bright cartoony colors which I tend to use for glazes and things like that. Now Wave 2 has dropped and has been out for a little while and uh, it's everything <laughs> without resorting to hyperbole. It is exactly what we'd hoped the first run would be and yet it doesn't seem like a lot of folks are talking about it. So here is a German Grenadier painted almost exclusively with the Vallejo Express range. So there's Wave 2 military colors. You're going to see a lot of those in action today. All of the paints being used will be listed in the description below. This is nice and quick, so let's get started. So to start off with, pick a nice light gray primer that you like and use that. Here I've used Premium Gray from Vallejo out of their rattle cans, but it will not matter too much what you use. Anything light gray. Uh, uniform gray from the Army Painters, probably as dark as I would go. Mechanica Standard Gray. You're starting to get into slightly too dark territories. What you can do would be to quickly blast over the miniature with a light gray from the pot. Just a couple of coats of that. Uh, but if you can get a nice light gray primer, much easier. So the first thing we're going to do is to give the Express range a little bit of extra help in getting that contrast effect on some of these edges. So what I've got is just some white and uh, you really can't do, you, know, you can't go wrong with this. Just a raggedy old brush uh, concentrating towards edges and points where you want, uh, like where light would catch. So particularly on areas like the equipment uh, folds in his trousers, you'll see here. And if you do want to go a little overboard, do it on the camo stuff because we're going to want that to be fairly light. Now I may actually have applied a little more than I need, but I'm not too fussed. What I'm going to move to now, uh, we can theoretically paint a contrast or express skin tone straight over the gray like this, uh, but I've never, I don't like how it looks. Um, he looks like an alien, you know, <laughs> skin tone over gray just doesn't do it for me. So what I'm doing here is laying down some wraith bone. Uh, you could even just lay down a little bit more of the white, but you want a smooth coat for this. So I'm going to do this to his skin, both his face and his hands. Now that is the one part that is in any way time consuming. What we'll move to now is the skin for him, and I'm going to use here Gilliman Flesh, though there isn't really a correct choice. Uh, you can use Dwarf Flesh or, uh, what is it, Warrior Skin, anything you like from any manufacturer, it won't matter. And now once that is dried, we can start cracking on with the actual uniform. Now what I'm going to start with is Bag of Bones to lay down the base color for the camouflage smock. And I'm going to go straight over the, you see the straps, because uh, we're going to paint those later. But for now, just a quick coat of this over the smock. Now once it has had time to dry, you'll see that it goes well, it's not as yellow and orange as it looks when it's going on. So bear that in mind, no matter what color it is you're using, to wait until it's dry before you make your decisions about it. Now, I've gotten a little bit ahead of myself by applying some armor green on the uh, helmet cover already. What you want to do is lay this down in fairly jagged little shapes. Uh, a few triangle shapes and then little pointy bits off to the sides. Um, remember as well to go up to the edges of areas. You know, you don't want it to look as though all of your camo has been neatly painted onto the center of what you're doing. So there are some pretty good photo references for this stuff out there. Uh, you'll see armor green covers just a little bit more than something like camouflage green would over this color we've used already. So yeah, a few splotches of this. Now it will take a bit of practice to get your eye in for applying essentially random patterns. Um, it helps, I think, to think in terms of triangles. And when you've got your armor green out, slap a little bit of it on the mess tin and the gas mask canister as well. We're going to move on to willow bark. And this is going to be our brown. You'll see I've started applying a little bit up there too. Same procedure. 
And this time, you do want to go up quite close to some of the green, even overlapping some of it. And that's where Willow Brown, because uh, this covers quite well, it's going to let you splodge over the green and that'll look a little bit more natural. So, same procedure, little triangles, little trapezoids and splodges. And at the same time, you can also paint in his boots with this as well. And there is our camo smock using just those express paints. Nice and quick to do, and they're pretty close to accurate as it happens. Now what I've got, this one's called Rotten Flesh, and despite the name, it's actually a really useful kind of khaki color. Uh, a greenish color, but particularly over his uh, bread bag, and I'm also going to paint in his gaiters with this. This is a good faded off green. Now with Wasteland Brown, we're going to go right over the rifle, uh, covering everything, including the parts that are going to be black later. You've probably noticed I haven't been terribly careful with those on its uniform either, and there is a reason for that. For now, this just makes it easier to apply. Now, spinning him around again, we're going to use Battle Dress Brown on his felt cover for his water bottle. My goodness, what a lot of faff these German equipment lists have. Uh, now, this is just a really useful khaki brown to have, so whether you are painting British uniforms or not, I do recommend having this one in your arsenal. Now we're going to take a little bit of camouflage green and apply that over the top of the armor green that we've already put on the mask canister here. Uh, purely optional step, I just think it adds a little bit to the color and uh, it will make it look a bit different to the mist him. Now once those colors have dried, what I have here is another departure from the express range. I'm using Black Legion from Citadel, mostly because it covers so well. You could very easily swap this out for a typical black acrylic. Um, I'm just using this because I really like the flow. So over all of the black bits on the weapon, on his equipment, and you do not have to do this before you do his uniform, but uh, I'm being a little cheeky and I want to do the big surprise of Lancer Grey. So yeah, I'm doing this bit now. You can do this in whichever order you like. Now you've seen the finished product already, so you kind of get a feeling for what this is going to look like. But here we go with the Lanza Grey. This stuff just goes on like a dream. As with any of these one coat paints, try and keep your brush moving in the same direction as much as possible. Um, obviously it's not always going to be possible to do it like that, but here we go. One quick blast of Lanza Grey over all of the uniform. Let's come back once this sucker is dried. And there, as if by magic, our Grenadier is pretty much done. You could base him up, put him on the table like this, and a whole army of him is going to look fine. It'll look really good, actually. Uh, you do still need to varnish these, and I'm going to do that as a final stage. Anyhow, uh, the Express Range, Contrast, Speed Paint, they're all, they're not quite as hard wearing as a traditional acrylic, so varnish, right? It's important. What I am going to do is a couple of additional details just to knock this guy up a little bit further. I think we've saved so much time using these one coat paints, it won't hurt to spend a little more time on him. So first off, his skin. What I've got is some flayed one flesh, and we're not going to do very much of this at all. What I'm going to aim for is the backs of his knuckles, because uh, especially on this fella, he's got quite big hands for some strange reason. Uh, but also on his face, just a little on his nose, his cheekbones, and his chin there will add a bit of depth to that face. And while we are working on his face, just a little bit of wraith bone on the teeth. And uh, I might do this off screen, or I might fluke it. Now I've got a tiny touch of slaughter red here. This one is from the Army Painter, but flesh tear is red or anything similar will work perfectly well. Now this I'm I am going to do off screen. I'm actually going to paint in his tongue with this. Uh, some miniatures will have uh, up and lower, upper and lower teeth modeled. I tend to find if you paint the lower teeth red, uh, it looks a little more realistic. Up to you if you do to decide to do it this way. And from the Vallejo game color range, I have dark gunmetal, and I'm going to do just a little bit of this on the dark gunmetal. <laughs> 
just to bring this up a bit. And once this is dried, I'm going to go ahead and varnish them. Pop his base on him. The recipe for that will be in the description, same as always. Let's get a look at what he looks like when he is all finished. And so, there at last, our grenadier is complete. Individually, not much to write home about, though I think he doesn't look too bad, but an army of these guys is going to look fantastic on the table. Especially, I think those one or two extra little touches, highlighting his skin and his gun, are going to really elevate them. And a nice simple base, to put everything into context, really helps sell the look. I think it's easy to overestimate, or underestimate rather, just how much a tiny, simple base will really make the difference. So, as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for all of the light and sound equipment, and my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Thank you so much for your support, folks. Without you, this channel would not be going. So any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.